bring in Oppenheimer Managing Director and Senior Analyst, Fadal Gate, right now, and Charles Schwab, Chief Investment Strategist, Liz Ann Saunders. Good to see you both. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us. Does the China story matter to U.S. markets, Liz Ann? Uh, I think it does, yes. Um, it, I think it matters as it relates to the deflationary pressures. I think it matters as it relates to Fed policy. Uh, if the dollar continues to strengthen, that isn't directly something the Fed looks at, but it acts as a tightening mechanism. And I think that's why you saw expectations for September being the initiation date drop a little bit after China made its announcement. So I, I, I think it matters. I don't think there's a direct economic impact, but there's certainly an impact potentially on Fed policy. We know that the economy of China has slowed down quite a bit. This was, I guess, Fadal, the biggest consumer of oil and energy. And that's one of the things that has been hurting prices. What's your take on the energy market? Market right now well, as it relates to China? Well, we think we are close to a bottom when it comes to uh, oil price. Oil uh, prices will remain unpredictable, uh, but we think that we are going to drift higher. It will take longer. Lower for longer is the new way of looking at Lower uh, for oil. longer on oil and lower for longer on rates. Correct. So uh, what we see here is that at the end of the day, the market will come to an equilibrium that will give us between 65 to $75, which I call it, this is the new normal. So investors, yeah, you know, oil companies will have to adjust to the reality that $90 oil is not around the corner and $30 oil is an aberration. It could last for a day or two, but it's not going to last forever because the marginal cost of production is close to $50. So companies are not going to invest to break even. Company invests to generate returns. You're excited you can, about the shale revolution, though. Yeah, absolutely. It changed the way we look at the oil market and forever. OPEC missed that. The large oil companies missed that. Yeah. Everybody, Everybody missed, missed it. it. Absolutely. Almost, except people actually well, Fadl in the shale didn't business. miss it. He's been talking about the shale revolution for years. So, Fadl, oil right now at $43, and you talk about the, the target price, $65 to $70. What gets it from $43 up to $65? It's really very simple. Uh, companies uh, cut capital spending by 40%, and it's not enough. When oil prices drop by $50, and you can only save five on your cost structure, you're still in a hole for 45 bucks. Wow. So, therefore, we are far way, uh, way from an, a, you know, a realistic expectation for oil prices. Now, Wishful thinking is not a strategy. Companies say, oh, hopefully oil prices will go to $90 by the end. Mm. But guess what? You're forgetting that you are producing 4 million barrels a day of shale production, and it's here to stay, mm -hmm. no matter what OPEC does, regardless of oil prices, because these companies can dial down and can dial up. They can increase capital spending. Right. Because the response time now is two weeks. It's not building a platform in the, uh, you know, uh, offshore that will take you five years. So that is why we are in entering a new phase, if you will. As oil prices have come down, Lizanne, everybody thought that people would use the savings from the gas pump to put it in the economy. We're getting the retail sales number in a little while. How would you characterize the backdrop for investing, the fundamentals what, of the economy? Uh, Fidel and I were talking about in the green room. So I think we have to understand the different mentality and mindset and structure of the economy in this post-debt super cycle environment. So since 2008, we've been in massive debt le deleveraging mode by the private sector. And although they've gotten debt levels down to more normal levels, I think the psyche of the consumer has changed in perpetuity, or at least for this generation, so that what accrues to their bottom line in terms of things like a drop in oil prices and gasoline prices is not going immediately into consumption. We have a smarter consumer. So a, a much greater portion is going to either continued pay debt, debt pay down or into savings. And I don't think that that mentality on the part of the consumer changes in this cycle. Yeah, but the savings rate right now is up to 5%. Right. Yep, and I think that that is a function of not only the the extreme of the, the debt super cycle on the upside, but the fact that we had a 10-year period where you had two massive financial crises and stock market crises. It's not all that different than what happened to a generation after the Great Depression. It really changed the mindset for an extended period of time, and that's why I think things like this plunge in commodity prices has not gone right to the bottom line in terms of things like retail sales. Yeah, really interesting stuff. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Lizanne Saunders, Fadelgate. We'll see you soon. Uh